And so we've now taken a look at the kinematics equations and what you need to do to begin to solve them. And in essence, you need to have three variables to begin to work through them. And once you have three variables, you can solve for all of the variables. Uh, but what I'm going to look at now is a, a situation where uh, you're not going to directly have three variables. Uh, you're indirectly going to have them. And that is deriving what's called the range equation. So let's take a look at something. Let's say that you wanted to find the range of a projectile, but you only knew the velocity and the angle. So you, you don't have your traditional uh, variables to work with. Um, you don't have three in any dimension, but you have velocity and angle. So if I just gave you V initial here, and I gave you some angle of launch, and I wanted you to find the range here, or the delta x, how would you go about doing that? Well, to go about solving this problem, we need to look at what's going on here in terms of the symmetry. Well, one of the first things that we know that when we have a ground-to-ground -ground launch is we have uh, the ability to use symmetry. So if I come on over to here, if we're doing a ground-to-ground -ground launch, I know that it's going to land at the ground with the same velocity as the initial velocity and it's going to make the same uh, angle theta only this time it's going to be below the horizontal so that's going to be important for us to use in a minute because we're going to set up some symmetry here to help us out so if I were to come on here and to start to draw these components I have my x component I have my y component I have my x component and I have my y component here and we know that there's a symmetry involved here with the y component. The x component is the same no matter what. And we know that, that the x component does not change because there is never an acceleration in the x direction. One thing we definitely want to do here always, as we should have, I should have done this in the beginning, is to define your axis. So we're defining positive y is up and positive x to the right. Now, I'm going to label here another important feature, which is V initial Y. And I'm going to have here V final Y coming down. These are equal and opposite in magnitude. Okay, if you have a ground to ground flight, equal and opposite in magnitude. So I'm going to have V initial Y. I'm going to go ahead and write it out in terms of the component. I'm going to have VO sine theta here. And the VX is just going to be VO cosine theta. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write in what we have in terms of V initial. And, and these are the scalar components now I'm writing. So I'm going to say V final Y equals negative V initial sine theta. So it's just symmetrical in the down direction. And this V of X, of course, is still the same. It's VO cosine theta. Nothing has changed. Okay, so we're just setting up some symmetry here. It's really nice to use this, which we're going to show you in a second. So what do I do to begin solving this problem? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write out our equation that we have in the x direction. I'm going to move this down a little bit. I'm going to try to keep it in the screen. And in our x direction, we know that there's just one equation, which is vx is delta x over delta t. It's just one equation. There's no acceleration. It's constant magnitude and direction. And I can take that a step further. I can go ahead and I'm going to call that equation one, by the way. I can take that a step further and I can say VO cosine theta equals delta x over delta t. And we're going to take it one step further. And I'm going to just write it out in terms of time here. And it's going to make sense in a second. I'm just going to say the time delta t is just equal to delta x over v initial cosine theta and the reason that I went ahead and solved for that is because in the next equation what we're going to have is we're going to substitute this equation one into that so I solved for time that's going to make sense in a minute but basically I'm just using uh, the terms that we have we have the range the V initial and the theta. All right, so what's the next equation we can use down here? Well, the next equation we're going to use is one of the kinematics equations in the y direction. I'm going to call that equation two. And what we have here is V final y 
equals V initial Y plus AT. And you've seen this before. And this is nothing more than the kinematics equations we've used. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to write these out in terms of uh, cosine and sine. So we know that V final Y, we said all that that was was negative V initial Y, right? Equals V initial Y plus AT. We're using that symmetry from up here. Remember we said that up here that this this up initial y velocity is the same as the down. And then I can take that a step further and I can just write out negative VO sine theta equals VO sine theta plus AT. Whoops, AT. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just combine the terms here. I'm going to bring these over, so I'm going to get negative 2 VO sine theta equals AT. And we're going to use T in, in interchangeably with delta T. I saw for delta T up there. And so when I take this equation, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back up here to equation 1, which we defined here. Remember when we, we solved for T? And I'm going to substitute equation 1 into equation 2 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that delta T from equation 1. I'm going to substitute it right into here. And what we're going to end up getting is negative 2 VO sine theta equals a times delta x over VO cosine theta. And that's what we have right here. Okay, We just substituted equation 1 into equation 2. This is all still equation 2 um, up to this point. And now I've sub now it's a combination of two, two and one. I've substituted them into. Okay, now you can see that I've substituted in the time here, and we need to solve for the range. So I'm going to use the symmetric property of math. I'm going to write delta x over here. So delta x equals negative two v o squared sine theta cosine of theta all over acceleration. Okay, now what we need to do is to put this in a form where we have one trig function instead of the product of two trig functions because if we want to solve for theta this is going to be extremely difficult to do. We can't just take the inverse sine or the inverse cosine. So what we're going to do is remember a trig function that we've used in the past, and that is this, 2 sine theta cosine theta equals sine of 2 theta. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute that in. You can see the 2 here, you can see the sine theta here and the cosine theta here. And we're going to go ahead and just substitute that in. So you're going to get delta x which is the range, equals negative V O squared sine of 2 theta over acceleration. And now you have derived the range equation for a projectile. Um, an interesting way to think about this too, the way that you can remember this is the following you're going to be given three things in this problem. The velocity, the angle, and the range. Or you're going to be given two of these three, and you're going to have to find them. So I always, a, a little acronym you can remember is this is, I call this the VAR equation. Velocity, angle, range. And so if you have these three things, you need to use the range equation. And so you can kind of think about this as the fifth kinematics equation for projectiles. We've talked about the four uh, basic kinematics equations before. 
And so this works out very nice for projectiles. 